Ewan, a warm welcome back to Starts Park. Four years on from your departure, you're once again a Wraith Rovers player. Yeah, thanks very much for the welcome. Um, delighted to be back. Um, took a bit of time to get over the line, but now that I'm back, I'm, I'm thrilled to get started. I was doing a wee bit of homework, and um, I've got really fond memories of you, you being here, and I'm sure Rovers fans will make an ilk will also. But I had a wee look at your stats, and I wonder if some of these will, will surprise you. Because um, they really do stand out. 96 games. It's only four short of the, of the century. Nine goals. I think that's right, aye. Yeah. I think the club actually put up saying that I'd only scored seven goals. So no, it's nine goals, like don't that. worry about that. But, but um, what was interesting for me was um, 25 clean sheets. Yeah. That's the most important thing for me, being a defender. You know what I'm like. Um, can I throw my body on the line type? So, um, yeah, if I can emulate that in this spell, then you know, I'll be really happy. Throw into the mix there, you've also got um, 48 wins, 24 draws and only 24 defeats across best part of a, a century. It seems that with all these attributes, it's right time, right place. Exactly that, I um, I think it's been fairly well documented that there was another couple of options here in the background, but um, if you're having a conversation with, with the club and obviously my, my spell here previously, which I, I loved, um, it became a no-brainer for me, to be totally honest with you. So, like I said, now that I'm back... Um, it's back to work for me, it's just about trying to get back into training and um, get myself as fit as possible and then, um, like I said, ready to go. Tell me how the deal came about. Potsy phoning me 200 times every day <laughs> just about. Um, to be fair to me, somebody I've obviously got massive respect for. So, um, yeah, it was a, I'm at a stage in my life where I felt it was best for me to, to come back home um, through the family situation. So um, I have to be thankful to Hartlepool because you know, they were really understanding with me, they were good with me. Um, and then obviously, like I said, a lot of chats with John Potter. Um, spoke to the gaffer as well and had a feel for what the club were looking to do. And for me, it was just too good an opportunity to, to turn down by, by coming back here. Tell us about some other factors that, that helped make the, the decision here. Because I was watching you in the breakfast room there, chatting to some of the guys. And, and it just dawned on me in that moment that this place has been revolutionised since you were here su such a short time ago. Yeah, it's incredible to be fair. I don't know how long the, the new owners or directors have been in, but from the last time I was here, it's, it's certainly like a different place. I mean, um, I think the first thing I asked was if they fixed the heating and the dressing room, because I remember it being Baltic every time I was in here. Um, but but no, it looks a new place. Um, it's still got the same home touches that I remember for the last time. And um, one of the most important things for me is that there's still a lot of good folks still at the club that, um, that I've missed in my time away from the place, yourself, Sai, um, people that I know are the, the heart and soul of this club remain at the club, which is which is massive for everyone. So um, while it has got a new feel to it and a new touch and, and modernised, which is what I think everyone in Kirkcaldy will be happy about, there's also the same people there that, that run the place. That's hugely important and a compliment well, well received. You also have um, new teammates in the dressing room but a whole number of familiar faces as well what was your induction like what was the, the welcome back no it's been great I have to say everyone from the, the staff um, the players and the supporters have all been amazing with me since it's been announced that I was coming back um, so uh, from that point of view I'm very very thankful um, obviously some of the lads that I was here the last time a bit younger I have to say um, when I was here but it's good to see familiar faces like that but can I make that transition period a wee bit easier um, but also a lot of new teammates to, to get to know and um, to get comfortable with so you know after a few weeks I'm sure that'll be fine and I'll be settled in and, and can get back to playing my best stuff again. It was only a couple of days ago I sat with a, our manager opposite me and he was kind of saying you know solid powerful centre half right time right place might have actually been Ian's um, comment that I've stolen from him he's absolutely thrilled and, and I've known that he's been kind of chasing the potential that you'd come here over a number of months he's he's been kind enough to say kind of keep this to yourselves but I'd like to see it pan out this way I know that um, you were a, a number one choice on his on his hit list and of course John Potter in the, in the wider team tell us a wee bit about um, the welcome and how important the, the backroom staff are the, the managerial side of things and I will just cue you in they are always the first to watch these interviews no, it's been amazing. Like you said, um, I think for any football player, the one of the biggest things you can you can have a feeling of is that you're wanted. Um, and you know, I'm no different for anyone else to to know that you are, as you said, you're, you're so highly wanted from from a manager, from a coaching staff, especially people with a lot of experience in the game. You know, the gaffer's been a brilliant player, a top level player, really, and obviously with Potsy similar, but also you know he's managed, well, coached at the 
the top level with, with Hibs and Sunderland. So for people like that to hold you in high regard, um, it obviously puts a good feeling into you. Um, gives you a bit of confidence to come in knowing that they've certainly got your back. So um, yeah, it was a massive factor in, in coming here was to, to get working alongside these guys and, and hopefully improve myself. Across social media, um, I was monitoring our own Ray TV uh, chat feature on the, on the live game the other night. Um, and just match the interactions with well-known fans. The, the reception's been overwhelmingly positive from our perspective. What was it like for you on Tuesday, knocking around the stadium again? I saw you coming down the, the, the walkway there and, and people kind of nudging each other and saying, that's, that's your guys, <laughs> just Jack, that's with them. Uh, what was it like on Tuesday night, watching the game? It was great. It's just, as I said, it's great to be back, great to catch up with, with familiar faces that you've, you've maybe not had the chance to, to have a proper catch up with in the past. And... Um, just getting back to, to seeing the lads playing there. It's, it's been a while, I feel, since I've been involved in, in football, albeit it's, it's not been that long, but it feels feels agey. So um, just to get back in a stadium on that match day um, and, like you said, to catch up with, with folk that I've met here before and also chat to, to some of the fans I hadn't really spoke to before was was brilliant and I, I can only be really thankful for the, the kind of positive welcome I've had off folk. Does that welcome help you drop your shoulders a wee bit? Yeah, it does, aye. Um, I obviously understand that it's, it's complicated with myself and, and the club in, in some ways, but um, I think the humility of folk that they've shown towards me and understanding that you know we're in a career-driven business here, um, it's, it's been brilliant. I've interviewed many, many people who've uh, crossed the Fife divide um, both ways, whether it be from the prom to, to the pars and you know. I'll be back to San Starco. It's not that unusual. I think there's, I think there's four in the in the squad just now who've um, who've made that journey. Sometimes players can apply a wee bit extra pressure to themselves, overthinking that that journey. Um, spoke to Ian Murray about it, and he says, um, I, "I suspect you're going to re- reply the same." But he says, "Football will give the answers." Yeah, exactly. I think that's such a massive thing. Um, the manager actually spoke to me about that as well on the phone, and it was something that stuck with me. Just that. Uh, um, a touch of class I felt he gave me a phone call one night and kind of reassured me about stuff not that I was overly worried but um, just the fact that he went out his way to call me and kind of put my mind to rest about that kind of thing stuck with me um, when I was coming to make decisions as well so um, but no in terms of myself listen I think it's it's important for folk to understand that um, it's such a short career we have and at times you have to make decisions that albeit you know might not be the most popular and you might hurt some people but um, you know you've got you've got a 15 year career span and if opportunities come up for you to go and do better for yourself your family um, to try and enhance your game and step up levels then at times it's you, you can't say no um, and I think as, as a professional I've been someone who's not been afraid to make big decisions um, that aren't the easy decisions but like I said if I've, if I've ever felt that there's an opportunity for me to to enhance my career, then, then I've kind of gone with it. Whether that being here, even leaving Kilmarnock, you know, it wasn't it wasn't an easy decision for me at all to leave the club that I stay around the corner for. But you know, ultimately, I felt at that moment in time it was the best thing for me. So um, it's the same with coming back here. You know, I feel as if this is a real, real opportunity for me, um, and one that I'm really to go with. But like you said at the start, there the the talks in the football on a Saturday. Absolutely, and potentially a debut against. Former club command, like they're on the on the horizon. Um, football's a funny business, isn't it? it? Always has these kind of little narratives that run through it. We've only just played them firmly in the in a little while back there. You must have looked at that via play group and thought, "This is of my life there." No, no, I tell me about it. Um, I was wondering how much abuse I was going to get. To be honest, <laughs> no, it's um, listen. It'd be great to go back to command. I can see like being here, um, like the familiar faces and folk that I've built up relationships with over a season, um, but. You know, it'll be a tough game for us first and foremost, you know, we'll go there and try and win that game. Whether, um, you know, I'm up to speed in terms of fitness-wise to get to there, I'll do everything I can to be, but um, I'll leave that up to the gaffer and the, and the coach and stuff. How has your game evolved since we've last seen you play? You know, I've seen you down at Hartlepool because I'm one of these people that travels on a Tuesday night when they've got nothing else to do, but how do you view the, the, the difference between the, the, the football and competitions north and south of the border? First and foremost, I hope folk don't expect me to be over that many wingers anymore because I think there's a few too many miles in the clock now for that. Um, I think I've managed to kind of solidify myself as a as a centre half as opposed to, you know, I think in my first spell here I was dotted about a wee bit, you know, full back, midfield, whatever. Um, but no, I think 
it comes with experience and that is the big thing that I would say about myself now, you know, I've, I've gone on to, to play in this league um, with them filming obviously, um, achieving the playoffs and then going to Kilmarnock and winning it, so I think I've got that experience behind me now of, of knowing how to win in this league um, in particular. Um, and then as you said in terms of the north and south, I think it's just down south is unbelievably physical compared to up here I felt. Um, I actually think technique wise and like there's a lot more technically gifted players up here than is given credit for. Um, but down there it's as if every player you play against is minimum six foot one and, and rapid. Um, so it's it's just a different intensity and, and look it took me a while to get used to it. You know, it was fairly well documented that I'd um I missed three seasons and it sent me back a good while. I didn't feel I put myself out there every Saturday on the pitch when, when I shouldn't have. Um, I should have probably taken a, a spell away and got myself up to real match sharpness. But, you know, the type of person I am, I, I, I want to play if I'm fucking run, basically. Um, so, yeah, I did that. But once I got to grips with it and once I came to terms with my fitness levels and got myself in the gym and bulked up a bit more, then um, I felt like I, f I finished the season as strongly as I've played for, for the last number of years. So... Um, I'm looking to take that form I finished with at the end of the season there and, and bring it in here I think it's just standing in good stead Where does your fitness stand just now what's your pre-season been like how, how match ready are you because we know that Blair will be looking at all the metrics and challenging you uh, quite rightly at every, uh, every way ah, Exactly aye. No, he's good at his job to be fair Blair you know, he's one of the first questions I asked if he was actually still at the club and then nearly done a U-turn when I found out he was but, um, but no no I've not done a great deal in terms of with the group. Um, when I was down there, it was a bit complicated with, with the situation in terms of trying to get myself back up the road. So um, I, tra I did the testing, trained for a couple of days, and then other than that, it's just been basically myself in the gym on the treadmill and, and doing weights, trying to keep myself in the best neck I can. Um, I came in the other night there before the game and, and had a session with Blair, so even doing that, I feel better for doing it, so um, it will not take me long, I don't. Surface won't cause you any issues whatsoever, given your, your time at Kilmarnock in particular? No, I think like anyone, it's, it's no ideal playing on, on Astro as such, you know, I, I did feel it was easier on the body down the road to be being on grass, but, you know, there's that many stadiums in Scotland have got Astro, and, and you can completely understand why in terms of revenue and whatever, so um, that shouldn't be any problem, as I said, it'll maybe take me a month or so to get back to the way the ball bounces on it, or just basic things like that, but other than that will be all good. We thing you said to me in the past, and when I first seen you were over top again uh, the other night there, as you can kind of say, it suits me, doesn't it? What about um, that journey north in the car? You know, What was it that, that raised a wee smile when you thought, yeah, that's what I'm going back to? Um, just everything to do with it, to be honest with you. you know, as, I've, as I've touched on here, that I left the club, I had so many strong relationships with folk and I felt I had a, obviously a, a real bond with the supporters um, before leaving, so just trying to rekindle that really, um, coupled with the fact that, as I said, you know, there's obviously new owners in charge here that mean business and, and that want to achieve success and, you know, with where I'm, the stage I'm at in my career, I feel that those kind of ambitions are aligned, so um, you yeah, come here and, and it's great to have the kind of the sentiment and, you know, catching up with folk and whatever, but you know, I'm certainly not here to, to mess about really, I want to come here and achieve good things for this football club. Tell me how you re-establish re that relationship with um, supporters on a, a Saturday. You've seen this place when it's busy, you've heard the noise, you know the, yep. you know the potential more than many of the people who are making decisions because yep. cause you've been in and around um, you know, <coughs> such important times, you obviously think that we're just missing out and that the final day of promotion was, was, was such a heartache but you've seen the potential yep. in and around. You, you've gone away, there's, there's a, a, I guess what I'm thinking about here is there's a, there's a line that supporters can step over. There's banter, there's winding up, mm -hmm. there's been territorial about your club, you know, we're Wraith Rovers before anything else. But you've been on the other side of that, and I wonder there's a wee bit here where maybe some of us as supporters have to reflect on how we treat players that go away, who might come back. Yeah. Was that something that, that, that you can easily deal with? Because that must carry a wee chip in the shoulder when you've been on the other side of that. No, oh, listen, I think um, with myself, I've got big enough shoulders to to deal with these kind of things, it's, it's obviously when you're in the moment, you can be angry or whatever, but as I said, I'm, I'm a football fan the same as you. Um, I understand fans' emotion and, and feelings towards their own clubs. Um, but like I said, we, I think in most cases I've ever known anyone in football, it's no personal decisions players make, it's it's to try and do the best for, for themselves and for their families. Um, 
in their careers because as I mentioned that is such a short career but no listen there's, there's certainly no animosity for me on that side of it you know I'm I'm big enough and ugly enough to, to take most of the shouts that I can hear for terraces so um, and in terms of you know getting them on side then you can only do that by doing well and nobody understands that more than me if if I go out and, and perform to levels that I should then I'm sure that they'll be fine with me and, and take me away from it because to be honest with you I'm not important as how the team's doing so um, I think we're going to need their back and I think that's clear um, we need them to come out in their numbers and um, you know particularly in this league your, your home form is so crucial and, and I've come here as an opposition player and I can assure you it's, it's never been easy I don't think I've had one easy game here um, and the crowd do play their part in that so as I said if they can turn up in their numbers and they can be as loud as what they usually are and, and stick behind us because there will be tough times this season um, and it's through those tough times you see what a real team's made of um, and I count everyone in that, ourselves, the coaching staff, the supporters and everyone. The two easiest questions for me in any interview are always the first and the last because the first is generally where are we at and the last is, is this one that I always put out there um, and that is address the supporters, over to you, what do you want to say to them? Just to say that it's, um, it's great for me to be back, I'm obviously delighted to return um, I can't wait to get back out and, and play games again for this football club um, it might take a couple of weeks yet but you know, be patient with that and um, when I do get back out there I'll, they know that I'll obviously carry on as I have done previously giving everything I can to, to make this football club a success Well Papi Ray TV, welcome back we enjoyed your football and we enjoyed your friendship um, last time you were here we we'll look forward to rekindling that Thanks so much David